This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, sci-fi, thriller film called The Colony. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Earth has been rendered uninhabitable due to climate change, pandemics, and war, so the ruling elite escaped to a planet called Kepler-209. After two generations, they launched the Ulysses Project to find out if they could return to Earth. However, they lost contact with the mission soon after it landed. Years later, the Ulysses II crashes into Earth's ocean. An astronaut named Louise Blake pulls her colleague Holden to the surface and comes back for Tucker. When Blake gets to the shore, she finds out that Holden is dead. She wakes up Tucker and informs him that the air is breathable and the radiation levels are safe. She tells him that he is now in command because Holden is dead. Tucker tries to get up, but he finds out that his leg is broken. So Blake goes on the first reconnaissance on her own. Not long, Blake reports through the communication system that there's evidence of biogeochemical recycling on the shore. When Blake finds an arthropod, Tucker surmises that there are aquatic life forms that can procreate. He instructs Blake to test her blood on the biometer to determine if being away from Kepler's radiation for more than a year has made her fertile. But the device yields a negative result. While taking a tissue sample from a jellyfish, fog starts to cover the surroundings so Tucker shoots a flare to help Blake find her way back to their camp. After a few minutes, Tucker sees someone approaching the space pod and surmises that it's Blake. However, Blake tells him that she's still too far to see the ship. Soon, a man breaks into the pod, so Tucker shoots him with a flare gun. Blake returns to the site only to find that the space pod is gone. After following the tracks on the sand, Blake sees people pulling the pod. She fails to notice people approaching her from behind to capture her. The Earth Dwellers take them to their camp and throw them into a deep pit. Blake finds out that Tucker is wounded, so she tells the natives that he needs medical attention. A while later, they allow Blake to climb out to treat a wounded man named Ooglap. Blake asks for her medkit, but they can't understand her language, so they ask a woman named Narvik to talk to her because she speaks English. When Narvik brings her to the pod to retrieve the medkit, Blake finds out that they have destroyed the communications equipment. After treating Ooglap's injury, Blake returns to the pit and tells Tucker that she saw babies at the camp. Blake notes that the communications panel has been destroyed, but the biometer remains intact. She asserts that they can look for the Ulysses 1 and use its equipment to report their findings. However, Tucker tells her that she has to do it on her own because he has lost too much blood. Tucker then takes his own life by chewing on a pill hidden in his dog tag. As Tucker slips away, Blake recalls when her father, gave her a matchbook before going on a mission. He instructed the young Blake to light a match each time the second moon passes Cygnus and notes that he'll do the same wherever he is. He promises they'll be together again before they light the last match. Blake begged him to not leave, but he reminded her that Kepler taught them to think of other people, not just themselves. He contended that they need to make sacrifices for the many. Back in the pit, Blake looks at the last match and seals it in a small bag. Suddenly, water starts pouring into the pit. When she asks for help, Ooglap allows her to climb out of the hole. She soon learns that they're evacuating the area because of a flood. Ooglap then takes her to a boat and ties her up on a pole. That night, Blake reminisces about the day her father told her about Earth. He showed her a plant inside a small bottle and told her that it was a tree that could not grow on Kepler, so he planned on taking it to Earth. He then disclosed that they received a signal from one of the weather stations scattered around the Earth and found a new area of regeneration. He assured Blake that he would send for her if he found out that it was safe to live on Earth. Blake soon watched her father depart from Kepler to carry out his mission. By daybreak, the flood has subsided, so the natives put Blake back in the pit. When she asks for water, the children tease her by showing her a red case that contains the biometer. Blake asks a child named Myla, to help her get the case from the other children, but Myla can't understand her. She then explains, as the best she can, that she came to Earth from another planet because they can't have babies there anymore. Later, the natives hid a few children and a baby in the pit because the community is under attack. Blake peeks through the hole and sees raiders abducting the children. One of the raiders looks into the pit, so the children submerge themselves while Blake clings to the wall to keep herself hidden. After the raiders leave, Narvik throws them a rope to help them climb out of the pit. Narvik finds Myla's doll, but the child is nowhere to be found. She deduces that the raiders have taken her, so she arms herself with a flare gun to go after them. Blake follows her and learns that Myla is her daughter. Soon they find the raiders taking the children and other captives into a boat. 
Narvik tries to shoot them with a flare gun, but Blake advises her to shoot in the air to distract them. When she refuses, Blake knocks her out and fires the flare into the sky. While the raiders investigate the flare, Blake sneaks into the boat and finds the red case. Before she could even inspect its contents, the raiders arrive, so Blake hides in the lower deck where they're keeping the captives. The raiders take Blake and the captives to a crumbling ship, where the men are separated and forced to work. A raider named Palling notices Blake's rifle among the belongings of the captives. He asks them where it came from, but no one responds. When Palling notices Blake's dog tag, he takes her to the bridge to meet their leader. While waiting for the leader, a boy named Neil asks her if she's an astronaut. Gibson soon emerges and tells Blake that he's been waiting so long for someone from Kepler. After Blake introduces herself, Gibson notes that she was Neil's age the last time he saw her. When Gibson asks what happened to the other crew members, Blake discloses that their pod malfunctioned while entering the atmosphere. She notes that they didn't get the chance to communicate with Kepler because the natives destroyed their pod. Blake then informs Gibson that his men had taken the biometer. She intends to connect it to the communication system of Ulysses 1, but Gibson tells her that the ship was destroyed. Later, Gibson recounts that he and the astronauts from Ulysses 1 first encountered the natives after sending their status report to Kepler. He stresses that Blake's father was good at interacting with him. However, the natives rebelled and destroyed Ulysses 1 before the next communication window. Gibson notes that Blake's father perished that day. The surviving crew members found weapons in an abandoned ship, but they are now running out of arsenal. Neil suddenly comes in to give Blake a space shuttle toy he made out of paper. Blake asks Gibson if Neil is his son, so Gibson discloses that he adopted the boy. When Gibson inquires about the situation in Kepler, Blake discloses that the technologies they invented to reinvigorate the human reproductive system failed. Gibson then shows Blake the dam they're building to hold the sea. He points out that most natives don't live beyond the age of 30 because they're exposed to mist and tide twice a day. He contends that their efforts will give them a chance to build a new civilization. The next morning, Blake takes a shower and finds period blood dripping down her leg. Later, Gibson introduces her to a group of children in a classroom. While the kids are singing a welcome song, a woman brings Myla into the room to join the other children. After the song, Blake answers a few questions from the curious students. When Blake visits Neil later that day, the boy shows her a plant and tells her it's supposed to grow into a tree. Neil claims that he heard about trees from a man named Christopher Columbus. He reveals that the man occupies a cabin next to the engine room, and he talks to him through the pipes. Blake asks him to lead her to the cabin, but the boy notes that he's not allowed to go there. Blake finds the cabin on her own and discovers that the occupant is her father. Gibson suddenly emerges from the engine room and apologizes to Blake for lying about her father. He then discloses that her father was the one who instigated the rebellion after he fell in love with a native. When Blake asks her father why he gave up on the Kepler, he contends that he wants to stop their mistakes and stresses that it was wrong for Kepler to return to Earth. Later, Blake sees the weather station near the ship and tells Gibson that she can connect the biometer there and transmit the findings to Kepler. She notes that they now have proof that they can reproduce on Earth because her thyroid-stimulating hormones have recovered. During dinner, Neil's mother, Munai, tells Blake how Gibson saved her son's life. Munai notes that Neil almost died when she gave birth because the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck, but Gibson arrived and cut her stomach open to deliver the baby. Munai notes that Gibson took them as his own family soon after Neil was born. Their dinner is suddenly interrupted when the power goes out. Palling soon comes in and informs Gibson that someone took out the guards by the generators and cut the power. Blake offers to help them secure the ship, but Gibson orders her to return to her cabin. On her way to her room, Narvik attacks Blake and asks her where she can find Myla, so Blake takes her to the children's room. Narvik finds her daughter, but a guard catches them before they can leave the room. Palling soon arrives when Blake tries to help them fight off the guard. Before they can take Narvik away, she tells Blake that they only take the girls. When the power returns, Gibson tells Blake that Narvik was one of the guards who rebelled. He contends that Narvik hates them, but Blake points out that she only wants to get her daughter. Blake inquires why they only take the girls, so Gibson explains that the women back in Kepler will be too old to get pregnant when they arrive on Earth because most are in their 40s. Gibson then asserts that the children will be mature enough to breed with Kepler men when they arrive. He stresses that they're only doing what's necessary to ensure that they don't go extinct, but Blake points out that the human race can still propagate without them. Gibson then argues that the natives are not like them, so they must be involved in repopulating the planet. Palling finds Blake's red case and gives it to Gibson, but they find it empty. Blake deduces that the biometer was left in the camp, 
so Gibson tells her that she must go back there with Palling to find it when the tide rises. When Blake asks what they'll do to Narvik, Gibson discloses that they'll execute her at dawn. Later, Gibson sees Neil playing with Myla's doll and sees the biometer hidden in the back of the toy. When Blake returns to her cabin, she finds Myla hiding in the locker. Palling soon knocks on the door and tells Blake that he has to search her room because a girl is missing. Instead of searching the room thoroughly, Palling attempts to force himself on Blake. Palling suddenly hears a noise in the locker. As he approaches it, Blake kisses him and slips the poison from her dog tag into his mouth. Then she squeezes his jaw to break the pill and ensure he ingests it. After Palling dies, Blake and Myla go to the engine room to find the other captives. When they encounter a guard, Myla distracts him so that Blake can knock him out. Blake soon finds the captives and reunites Myla with Narvik. The natives immediately go to the children's room to take them out of the ship. Meanwhile, Blake goes to her father's room and finds him looking outside the window. He is baffled upon seeing Gibson and Neil running toward the weather station because he has never known Gibson to leave the ship. When Blake notices Myla's doll in the room, her father discloses that Neil sent it through the pipes. Blake deduces that the biometer must have been inside the doll, and Gibson already found the device. Blake notes that Gibson still cannot provide proof that they can procreate on Earth because she hasn't used the biometer to see if she's fertile. However, her father reveals that Neil is the only proof he needs because he's a Kepler. He urges Blake to stop Gibson, so she immediately heads out of the ship. On the way out, she encounters guards firing at the fleeing natives. She effortlessly shoots the men, allowing the natives to escape without casualty. When they get outside, a guard hits one of the natives in the leg. After Blake deals with a shooter, she helps the native get into a boat. Ooglap offers to help Blake get into the boat, but she swims to the weather station to stop Gibson. By the time she reaches the weather station, Gibson has already used the biometer on Neil. After loading the device on the transmitter, Gibson holds a gun to Neil's head and tells Blake to drop her rifle. Gibson then reveals that Neil is her own flesh and blood. Moon Eye confirms it by telling Blake that Neil is her brother. Blake still refuses to drop her weapon, so Gibson shoots Moon Eye in the head. When Blake finally drops the rifle, Gibson picks it up before activating the transmitter. Blake then tackles Gibson to the water and holds on to him until they both run out of breath. Before long, Narvik pulls Blake out of the water and takes her to the boat. After Narvik successfully revives her, Blake's eyes immediately turn to her father, who is relieved that she survived. Later on, Blake approaches Neil to give him the matchbook that her father gave her long ago. When Neil asks her if the Keplers will bring trees when they come, Blake can only tell him that it's possible. As soon as they reach land, the natives run back to their camp to reunite with their loved ones. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.